Today is the 8th of February and roughly uh, three weeks ago episode one of the Left for Dead ambitious ambassador project went live on YouTube. Loads of you watched it and during that episode there was a part where I found a note in the glove box from someone who had the best intentions to get this thing on the road and in his words back to showroom condition. Now that note got to me and I thought I need to do this car justice. I can't just get it running and sort of send it off down the road. I need to do the right thing, buy it. So I decided I had roughly 10 working days I could utilize to get this thing singing and dancing like it's 1983 all over again. So days one and two are on YouTube. You need to go and watch those now if you haven't already watched them. Because if you don't go and watch days one and two, then the rest of this isn't really going to make much sense. So go and watch those now. And then when you, it's only two hours long. Don't worry. So when you come back, you've got another two or three hours to get stuck into this thing here. We're going to start back at day three. And on day three, as you can see, I was having a little bit of trouble with the fuel pump on the car, which turned out it was an innie inside the tank and the tank inside wasn't very nice and it was just a load of ball ache really. So we flew through that day and I also did a couple of other little bits to the car. And then, yeah, we're going to jump back in after that at day four. Now, you are going to need some stuff to get through this episode. So here's a list of things for you to gather up to make it through the next two and a half, three hours. So what am I going to do today? Well, in the last episode, we got the car running to a point where it was moving under its own steam to get in here and we got the suspension pumped up. Perfect. Great starting point. But now I'm going to get stuck into that engine properly, hook everything up nicely, blank off some uh, vacuum uh, things on the, on the carb, um, do a couple of new vacuum lines, put the air filter on, and generally make it run a lot nicer. I'm going to get my timing light on it now that I've found the timing mark, which I'm going to talk to you about, which was an absolute ball ache. Um, and, and yeah, I'll show you why um, before you're all screaming at me, going, oh, I have time millions of these, well, it is. It's, it's just watch and you'll understand why this was a problem and why it didn't get done by like the first time. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to see if it just runs nicely, if it holds its temperature, if the fan kicks in and all that type of good stuff. Um, we're going to put a, a power steering belt on it. We're going to tighten the fan belt up. We've got to find some new little nuts and things for that. So yeah, we've got loads to do. Hello, welcome to the front of the car. Well done to everybody who got Schrader valve cap correct for the uh, hydro spastic, hydro elastic suspension. So there we go. Just tighten that back up there. Lovely. Um, look at all these holes everywhere. These have all got to be sorted. Um, around here, this thing, look, has all got to be sorted. Um, this thing here should have a thing on it. That's all got to be sorted. This thing should definitely have a thing on it. That's got to be sorted. Uh, down there, that's all got to be sorted. Now, if you can see, can you see this seat? Let me try and get a torch in there. Back in top. I mean, there you go, look. So you can see where that white dot is. Now the problem with timing this car up initially was that there was no timing marks on the car. And by that I mean there's only these, but there's no numbers, there's no nothing. Now, 
the problem with that let me just put my head torch back on is that quite simply how are you going to know where to tie it up to it's just grooves there's nothing else so what i needed was a data sheet for the car which you saw me looking for in the last episode and i managed to find one rob's got a, com uh, a, a program on his computer and he shared this bit of paper with me and as you can see you've got all the details you need here including this part here where it says the timing should be set at the top of that tooth to give you that degrees of timing and that's where it should be set as standard that's the best for the engine perfect that's exactly what i needed so it's not just the sort of standard uh timing that you would expect 12 degs i think is a bit mad isn't it um anyway so yeah that's all cool i can get that timed up nicely now because i put a little white dot on it so that's what i'm going to be aiming for and i've got to see it on this little thing here so that's all cool um and as i mentioned briefly a moment ago that document showed me that uh it's not suitable for unleaded fuel sad times um so yeah i'd better get cracking haven't i stuff right so what have i just done well we've got this machine which is going to stop all the bits from there going into this little machine here this little machine has got one of these on which is dead cool um that's kind of that's that's fine two volts is enough capped a couple of bits off there this is a little overflow for the fuel so i'm just going to leave that off and see if the holly pump is going to cause us any problems um Got a little vac line going to the vacuum advance. Everything looks hunky dory there. Round here, now I, I, I haven't sorted this properly yet because I just want to sort of get it warmed up and then I can jump in and out of the cab, pull in the choke in and out, make sure that's all gravy. But essentially, it's ready to start warming it up. Yeah. Let's just get this bit sorted before we. Before we do anything else, give it a fighting chance, you know, poor thing. Oh, fuck it off! Oh, smell you later. What's it like in there? Gosh, fantastic condition. Hardly any rust. Right, uh, brush, dustpan and brush. Just brush all, brush all these weevils out. Too many weevils. Sometimes they go really far. Right, where was that other machine when I had? Minus and plus, okay, yeah, that's looking good so far. Uh, ah. <laughs> Which way does that look like that? Okay. dangerous the, it wants you to put that across there but it'll hit the terminals if I do that oh no I mean I think what it's telling me is that it's supposed to be that way around and the battery is wrong or it's supposed to have different posts on them but either way I'm not going to be I'm not going to 
I'm not going to be able to use that. Okay, no, it doesn't, doesn't matter for the moment. Has anybody seen my torque wrench? The batteries, you my torque wrench. Ah, there it is. <laughs> I'm excited to start this because it's been about a week since it's been started. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see it go, you know, if it is going to go. So, carbs pretty much in a good place. Get off! Carbs in a good place. Uh, should we crank her over and see what happens? Hey. Here we go. Come on. running a bit lean so we're going to sort out the timing and stuff we're just going to let it warm up for a little bit that started far too well if you think about it doesn't it it's incredibly impressive and it's you know running off the fuel in its tank i have put another couple of bottles of fuel in just to sort of get it there but yeah that's really smart um i'm now going to get it outside because we're going to all die of fumes in here um, and I'm going to have a little bit of a tidy up because it's a bit of a mess So there we go the brakes are starting to become less like brakes and more like just a piece of wood that i'm resting my foot on that was a ball lake to get open as well look at this little thing marvelous oh it's so gross still so i'm just going to watch this temperature rise now I want the fan to kick in, and when the fan kicks in, I can do some cool stuff. That's it now. That horrendous noise you can hear is the fan. What has kicked in is blowing ice cold, cooling air over my radiator. Tiny little fan. It's doing its job, and there is a bit of a bramble stuck inside there. So I'm hoping that will take care of itself. What's the temp gauge doing? Nice, let's see if that comes down. Okay, listen to how well it runs. Proper thing, proper thing. Right, bit more monitoring and then we'll get it signed up. Proper job that, wasn't it? Happy days. Can see an oil leak already starting there, that's great. Uh, right, let's just get this bramble out. Because you thought I was joking, didn't you? But that's stuck in the fan. Hopefully that's going to make a little bit less of a horrible noise. Let's see if I can spin it round and round. Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, right, let's get this machine hooked up. I think the timing's gonna be fairly close because it's running so well. Uh, how's it work then, what do we do? Interesting, hot start, doesn't like. Move it throttle. I don't want as well. Just thinking about RPMs. And that's pretty good. So we are out according to this. Let's go loose. Yeah, okay. Now remember, I put a white dot on there, didn't I? Now uh, can you see? Can you see that white dot there? That white dot. Right, that white dot that you saw then should be in line with the, the, the slice little marker. And I'm all the way over on the distributor. So the distributor, as I thought when it was out there and I was trying to get it to run, has been put back in in a slightly sketchy place. So I'm going to try and pull it out now and just give us a little bit more room. Ah. Oh. Okay, let's have a go. It's nice working on something warm for a change. Anything I'm worried about in case there's any oil seals or anything I'm going to disrupt by doing this, but... One more oil leak's not going to hurt it, is it? Two washers. It's excessive, isn't it? Right, so we need to go more that way with the timing. So if I pull it out now, send it back a touch. Now that should hopefully give us that little bit more bollocks. A little bit more what we need, you know. Got as well, just take the vacuum advance off just in case. Go the other way. I need I needed to go the other way. turn the idle speed down to where it should be because I turned that up to get it to run initially um, and then yeah we'll uh, it's an hour a cup of tea or something I suppose isn't it <laughs> the, 
there's still a bramble in the in the machine here. Oh. How can I get that out? Oh. It's literally grown it into the fan. Hopefully that should sound a bit better next time. Let's just get this tightened up because that is timed beautifully. How do you like the, the, these apples? That idol's about right, everything's nice. Very cool. Oh, pillow for my knees. Okay, next thing is tighten this flappy fan belt up, put the power steering thing on. Now there's no nut on the bottom of that. So, have I got one in stores? Oh, you beauty. Right, let's just get a washer for that. Loose. Oh no, that's loose as well. What else is loose on this car? Righty tighty righty tighty righty tighty righty Lucy. Why can't I get this alternator to move though? Oh yes. Oh yes, we have movement. Ah. Yeah, that's probably enough. Any more than that would be playing with it, wouldn't it? Oh. Should probably do an oil and filter on this at some point, shouldn't I? Okay. Uh, right, this one. How does this one work? Same principles, different principles. Why are you being like this right now? Uh, in front of all of these people. And the piece of resistance, piece of resistance, piece of resistance. <laughs> right, so you watch this for me. I'm going to start the car. You tell me if this explodes or if it works, okay? impressions are that doesn't sound very nice. Okay let's try the wheel. I mean it doesn't sound very nice but the power steering works perfectly so maybe it will quieten itself down I wonder. Oh. 
Okay, so I just grounded my ear on a couple of bits there to try and find out what it was that was making that noise. And I'm thinking it's the alternator um, that's not happy. Even though it does definitely sound like it's going from the water pump. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's the alternator because it wasn't doing that before. We tightened it up and now it's, it's making shit noise. So, and it's kicked in again and no grumble noise. Come on! But yeah, that all seems to be working okay. We've got another alternator over there if that doesn't improve, but for now, job done. I've got roughly an hour and a half left of today, today's daylight. So I'm thinking now that we've got to run in like, you know, there's there's a couple of little couple of little, you know, noises and a couple of things, but she's running beautifully. No one could ever take that away from her until the water pump explodes and the alternator explodes and all that kind of thing. But we've got replacements of those, so I'm not worried. Are you worried? Now, for the rest of the day, I'm thinking I might as well do something that takes an hour and a half. And I've got an idea. As I was pressure washing this side, it got more brown as I was doing it. 
more brown started to come and now it looks like it's got a very bad case of eczema poor thing look at all these bits you know yes yes but you know it's come up all right hasn't it anyway uh thanks for watching i'm just gonna go and check it on facebook marketplace uh see you next time joking of course i am the darkness has arrived so it's time for day four to wrap up i'm going to pull this in and let it dry overnight and then tomorrow we can look at it and see exactly what we're dealing with you know um and then work out a plan see you in about five seconds i've woken up today and it is a heady eight degrees and the difference that that makes is huge. Knowing that at the start of the day, you're still gonna be able to feel your fingers and your toes by the end of the day. It does amazing things to you. So uh, it's gonna be a good day and possibly the most enjoyable day in the um, ambitious ambassador resurrection, uh, day five, because we're gonna tackle the interior. Now, I've been looking forward to this for a while, and I've got a new tool, which I'm going to show you now. No, I know it's the same shirt, but I, when I got home last night, I washed it. Um, and I unwashed my jeans as well, and then I've dried them and put them back on today. Um, so, this is a Henry wash. <laughs> as we all know, Henry's are the best tubers, that's simple science. Um, this one is a carpet cleaner version with all these things you know that you see on tv when they go <laughs> and all the dirt's coming through that's what this is apparently so let's get inside it see what's in there i'm not sponsored by anything this isn't someone hasn't bought me this or anything i bought this for my own money Is that a tr That's a trigger. How cool. Right, I'm gonna get my head into this, get it all set up, and then we're gonna dry back it first with the old Henry, and then we're gonna get this involved. So I'm gonna get you back in uh, once we've dry backed it. What a difference just a dry hoover makes. Although, this has got to go. So I'm thinking of this, because the board is still there, I'm just going to cut this old headliner out and then leave it, and then if a new person wants to put a headliner in, they can. But yeah, you know, with a good, good wet vac with the new Henry wash, I think we'll stand half a chance. And I've got the spare wheel to go back in there and I've got the uh, spare wheel cover, which is currently in the washing machine. 
Right, let's give this headliner a go, shall we? Well, here we go, do it. You go up, you do this right at least five times, and you don't skim it to a short four or five, so and you gotta do the whole thing twice at least. Did you get all that? Did you get all that? It's important, it's gonna be coming up in the quiz at the end. Let's go. I'm not sure I'm going to ever be able to emotionally recover from that. So this is what came out and the reason I was only going to take the covering off it but this it was not much better. I thought it was just going to be plain sort of grey underneath but no and it's it's just falling to bits so I'm just going to have to have a little think about that. Maybe give Ben a call, see what his schedule's like, or potentially leaving out the car, and it's a nice job for the next owner there, isn't it? Very easy to take off. It's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws and two lights, um, and then feeding it round into the channels of these bits here. All very straightforward, but disgusting so what have we got left well it's the reef um and a bit of nesting over there that i've only just spotted wow that's like a mouse's nest isn't it that is a mouse's nest <sighs> amazing this is a grotty car but hopefully not for much longer so yeah i think for now maybe we're just going to leave that off time is you know not necessarily on our side to start Retrimming headliners and the things, but well, I'll have a think. For now, though, we need to crack on. This is a hoovering, and you can see there. Yesterday, where I pressure washed the uh, the headrest because I, I just wanted that gone because that was disgusting. Do you remember what was there? It was hideous. Right, okay, let's crack on. <laughs> Honest, solid hard graft you know <sighs> those seats are very heavy and one of the bolts just did not want to come out so it was very much a case of turn it a little bit turn it back more gas turn it a little bit turn it back more gas turn it a little bit. last thing you want to do is snap one of those bolts so then you're, you're in big trouble but thankfully they all came out all nice 
and we've got a couple of seats that we're going to take inside and do some cool work with and yeah this is what we're left with and the specific reason for me taking these seats out apart from just to give it a good clean was to see if i can find any of these clips and things for this because i've got to get that back together so again i'm going to crack on with the dry hoovering now with the dry heaving um and uh yeah hopefully we'll make it look a bit nicer so what are we left with then well uh, you know i mean it's just look at the state of the floors like absolutely beautiful man real good condition everything and it's just not bad is it you know i've got all this stuff i'm just doing something with that mirror that was all knackered but yeah it's 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 gonna come back to life i can hear it groaning you know thinking fucking hell it's looking forward to my retirement not today okay so i've made this I've, I've built henry up and i've put some water and soap and stuff in but before i get cracking with it i'm just going to give it a fighting chance and just do some of these more stubborn stains i'm going to use my super soap secret formula I need to get a better spray bottle there you go right let's give that a quick whiz with this machine It's just sucking now, but I want it to do the spray as well. Okay, now it's on the spray as well. Let's see if it sprays. Wow, look at that. It's amazing. Definitely like how they do it in the films, isn't it? So I'm using the soapy stuff that came with this kit. And I haven't read the instructions of course, because why would I do that? But hopefully just by doing this it's going to, I don't know, soak or something. Right then, are we ready? Shall we see how it, shall we see if it works? Should we do this bit first, do you think? I put warm water in it, it says you shouldn't do that, but I did. Because I'm a rebel! Okay, here we go. What do we think? Is that, is it, I don't know. Doesn't look that impressive anyway. Let's try this bit. I feel like the adverts for these things, maybe they put like food colouring in them or something to make it look worse than it is, but I can definitely see some dirt coming through. I don't know how well it's coming across on camera. I'll do it like that maybe so you can see, look. you know that's all i think what i might do is i might give it a pass with this get that drill brush on it and then do it again so don't know how well that's coming up on camera 
but for one pass i mean it's done it's done pretty well but you can see a difference where i've used the scrubber so i'm just going to give it another scrub i think because this seat was particularly disgusting so i don't blame it that's only been one pass and the results you know i mean it's not it's not brand new but it's places on the back where there's not been anywhere that's come up like new that's that's beautiful but yeah let's get the scrubber on it and then give it another go Right then, that's had a good scrub. So I'm just vacuuming it now without putting any uh, water onto it just to try and suck up some of the last bits of moisture and dirt and then we'll leave this one to dry and see how it's done Now it's actually started to rain here um, which is a little bit frustrating isn't it but I mean that has come up really nicely compared to how it was i mean when it dries it's gonna look a lot better but you know it's not even that damp to the touch now but that is that's really good so i'll just give that another pass on and I'll see what see what it's like when it's dried but yeah nice thing those stains have gone as well cool so that's both seats done and you know they look amazing really i don't know if that's coming across on camera there's it's got quite a you know like a thick shag pile sort of you know thing to it so we, they're, they're, yeah when they dry i think they're going to look a lot better on camera but clean this machine is killer i love it i've just emptied it out and the the, the water was like thick brown so amazing now it is raining it's properly raining out here now which is grim i do have a waterproof jacket though and i don't really want to stop there so um i need to get all the plastics and stuff clean so i could do that now and then we'll get the carpet cleaner in here how does that sound let's go so i've just been giving the insidey bits a good sort of all the plastics are good clean up scrub up and yeah it's all come out really well sadly could not find the bits for these but you know that's just one of them things isn't it but i have screwed that back together it's still very loose though <laughs> but that's how it came from the factory <clears throat> so yeah nice looks good just gonna clean up some plastics in the back of the boot and then give the roof a wipe down and then get the carpet cleaner in here
again not sure how it's coming across on camera but this is now clean inside you know you sort of compare it to how it was and it's well it's it's amazing absolutely love it but last day five is drawing to a close uh, and my back is uh, is going to be thankful of a bit of rest um, it's sort of shaped a bit like a question mark at the moment um, and yeah I'll put this mirror on this is my permanent fix for this mirror do you remember how knackered it was but obviously we need one of those for MLT so I've MacGyvered one out of a couple of old mirrors and that's going to sort of get us through again something for the new owner to work on but for the rest of today I'm going to put the seats back in and do all my little trims and stuff put all those back in and I think have a big tidy up and that's it and then it's sort of leave it to dry in the workshop for the next couple of days and then on Friday there's worse ideas than taking it down for an MOT and the reason is that I'd do that so soon without even painting it or anything spoiler alert I'm going to paint it um, but yeah I want to I want to see what it comes back on if it fails and anything you know any little welding or anything like that I'd like to get that sorted before I start painting things but what a fantastic day getting all that done really really pleased um, yeah get prepared for day six in which uh, we'll know how well it did I've got a feeling it's going to want a front wheel bearing there because that one is a little bit wobbly and yeah a couple of other bits but uh, we'll see you then it's day six mother flippers So I've just brought it back from its MOT, a couple of things, when I was on the way there and when I um, was picking it up then, it's running bad yeah, it's running real bad, let me show you. Now that kind of gives me the impression it's running on three cylinders, but also <coughs> the fuel filter was mighty black and nasty inside so I don't know if stuff has got into the carb now and is making that a, 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 a problem but we're gonna have to sort it either way there's a fucking failure sheet <coughs> right then so you may be shocked to hear um that it failed its MOT. Sad times. And also, does anyone know what? Could anyone see where that went? It's not there anymore. Um, so, what's happened so far today is that it's running like a bag of nails. We've got misfires on these two plugs here, which I'm going to pull the plugs out shortly and just see what sort of stuff's going on there. But it's not the timing pretty sure it's not the fuel in so the only thing that could possibly be uh, uh, is our good old friend inside there from the first episode of this so I need to order some bits for this car now and I'm just going to get well I'm going to try and find if it's available some new bits for here because these Fisher Price Happy Meal HT leads I just don't know how good they are they just look very cheap and nasty so I'd like to sort of replace those and just give us a bit of a fighting chance it's hard to diagnose something when 
you, you could you don't know what you're dealing with you know because they might have been sat there for 20 years and have degraded over time and anyway <clears throat> what's it failed on brakes understandable bit of an imbalance on the back so we'll have to strip the back down and just have a little look at those uh mirrors both side uh, we knew that that's good uh windscreen washer i think it's just fluid that it needs <laughs> Uh, windscreen wipers, I've got windscreen wipers over there, that's good. Track rod end, offside, yeah that's fine, we can do. We can put one of those on, I've had a look and I think they're available on the internet. Steering rack gator, we saw both of those, do you remember the two gators? We saw both of those, that's fine, just get like a universal gator kit, bang them on. Exhaust system insecure, central, we'll, we'll, we'll tell, give it something good about itself to, to, to feel and you know, we'll stop making it so insecure. Uh, seat belt anchorage prescribed area or continuity significantly reduced near side rear. It's that rusty arch, so we've got to put a bit of body filler, I mean, weld on there. Um, wheel bearing, the wheel bearing on the front, which I mentioned, and I've got a wheel bearing kit over there, and I can almost guarantee it's not going to be the right one. Uh, brake hose, offside front, both, both pipes, so we'll have to have a look what it means where both pipes are, and we'll get something ordered. Um, suspension arm bracket mounting corroded and seriously weakened offside rear axle mounts that sounds pretty serious and deadly so we'll have a look into that as well um, service brake lagging at the back that's the yeah the pack the push uh, emissions not tested car misfiring badly and running poorly Let's say that again um, so that's it that's all that it needs all just that small amount of work so what I'm going to do today, first thing, is I'm just going to get this car up in the air and I'm going to get my phone out and I'm going to start ordering some bits because I need those bits to be here like yesterday so we can get fitting them. And then we'll start on some other stuff. Cool. I'm under the impression that now we've got that one working that um, it, the other one will just fix itself over time. Okay, wipers. done two things, two really easy things. I was just doing that just to make sure that I didn't have to like um, order any different wiper stuff, you know. Um, so I'm going to start going through some bits now and work out what I need to order. Okay. Now this thing here is all bad. So it's all all right down there, but it's just mainly this, which is going to be a little bit of a ball lake because it's got a, a few curves to it in different directions. So that's going to be a fun panel to make. But yeah, just cut that out, buzz a new one on. Dead easy, take me about four days. Um, 
what else let's have a look at the uh is it this wheel bearing no that feels pretty good is it this one oh yeah listen to that should not be able to do this can you see that movement anyway uh so yeah need to get stuck into that i have got a kit that i bought off ebay um and it's uh it's yeah, yeah it's definitely not gonna work um track rod end offside that one there so i can't see any movement in that i'll have to get a bar on it um but yeah okay what was the other weldy bit let's have a look so up here we've got a little hole there not too bad and then we've got this thing here if i get my pry bar you can see oh it's got a lot of movements in there it's hard to move it and film it at the same time but yeah so uh I, i'm gonna have to have a look into that but i'm hoping it's gonna be available because if it isn't that could be a problem and then down there there is another hole which is in a really easy to get to place ah lovely okay. so these are the offside front brake hoses and yeah they're pretty rough so a couple of those and clean everything up around it look at that wheel line has cracked there anyway uh no, they don't look too bad at all because there's been a bit of an oil leak over here so it's protected them don't fix your oil leaks boys bloody hell look at the oil leak on this <whistles> oh no it's not an oil leak i was spraying a uh, plus gas earlier to stop it squealing so much cool uh right exhaust this thing so a couple of exhaust rubber mounts there okay one Austin Ambassador for sale. MOT failed. Doesn't need much. Only joking. Um, well, Vilkeman to my office. Uh, I've got a list of bits that I need. Mirror glass, offside track rod end, steering rack, gator kit, rope arm, dizzy points, leads, oil cap. Rear beam rubber bush, centre exhaust rubber mounts, and a load of welding wire and gas and metal. Um, I'm gonna take 10 minutes now just trying to source these parts. This is the biggest sort of ball ache when it comes to old cars is that you can't just ring parts guys and be like, can you send me all this please? Because they go, what? What is it? An, a Rover? An, an Austin? And what? So you have to um, try and source things online and get them delivered quickly so uh, we can get this thing boxed off because I've only got seven days for a retest so we have to get the cars here sharpish and you're all crying out for part two of the ambassador so uh, I'm going to do this and then we're going to get stuck into some of the jobs that I can do today right well I've got as much stuff ordered as I possibly can. The only thing that I can't find is that rear suspension mounting bush. So I'm gonna have to do a bit of research on that tonight, I think. Um, the first job is gonna be this wheel bearing. Now I've gotta get this done first because I don't know if I've got the right one. So if I haven't got the right one, I need to order it. So I'm just gonna get stuck into this. That's very, very loose for a castellated nut. Is it castellated, is that the word? Don't really know, don't know anything. Get out! Ooh.
don't think I've ever known a backing plate bolt to actually come out uh, you know and come off and I'm talking about on new cars old cars just I've just never known it but this one is just perfectly unbolted I can't believe it and it's not even in bad nick come on Austin why did you have to go bust you could have been making some amazing cars Didn't really want to use that because now I've destroyed that and I'm going to have to put uh, one on, but I think I've got one in stock. But it's off. Look, this bit's here now, and inside of it, oh, everything's moving around. Okay, um, and this thing here is also quite move moving, and it's still on there, which I don't think it's supposed to be. Uh, even so, let me. Uh, what's that noise? It's very windy here today. Uh, right, so I'm going to swap all these bits out now. It's going to be a bit of a nightmare. Let's go. I've just knocked the races out of here and it's looking in good nick. So I'm going to clean that up and then get these bits installed and then bolt it all back together. Now I'm gonna to have to press these ones in, these these new ones in. So I'm gonna do that on my press over there, and you can uh, you can have a look if you like. That's one I was using earlier. Um, okay, smell you later. You know instantly if a bearing's going in nicely. Go, we're home. We're home. So if I uh, fish uh, that thing out, you can see now that that race is all where it should be, right on the edge, and it's going to match up with the the, uh, the other the other bit. Um, and I'm going to put the one in there. A bit more of a clean up on that one now. It's not the nicest in there. Why are you different sizes? Pain in the ass. Got to build it up on the other side because it's not with the, you know, ball like. Otherwise, it won't go in square. Yeah, it's pretty square. We'll see. See if that works. Oh. Thankfully, the bearings and races are, are separate on these, so it's not, you know, getting them in is 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 okay. Because if they're the same and you get it wrong, and I mean, if the if the races and the bearings are all in one and you're trying to square, it can be problems. But that is nice. It's all back together. Just got to put the plastic thing in the top there, the seal, and then we can start bolting it back up. That was easy, wasn't it? Right. Uh, which one's the old bearing? Which one's the new bearing? That one looks newer. Um, okay. So we'll pop that in its house. And oh, it feels. It was very nice, very nice. All right, take it out again and then squeeze in this. Has it got a sell by date? Probably. Bloody hell, look at the colour of it. Just pop all that golden syrup in there. Lovely. Gravy. And then this thing just slides in there. Don't know what that particularly does, but must do something, surely. Uh, and then back on the car. Oh. Now there is no movement. Can you see properly from there? I can't work it out. I'm trying not to touch the camera as much because I'm covered in grease, but there you go. Good. Okay. So let's just, uh, where's that thing gone? Put that back on there. Dead nice, lovely. Put that back in there. Oh. Right, so now it's going to get cleaned up 
put new ones of these on everything because these are all smashed now and then bolt everything back up hey right then this is all back on and it no longer wanders around like a dick in a shirt sleeve and it's got new boots and panties on it as well great i'm not going to put anything else back together because we're putting new ones of those on new ones of those on so that's job done for now now then what shall i do next well i've got to wait for some bits haven't i that's you know just the way of the world i'm hoping they're going to arrive friday and i can get them on and then maybe monday tuesday next week we can get it down for a retest but uh i thought while i'm waiting i'll do some welding and we'll take up tackle these bits and first i'm going to take the front bumper off why would i take the front bumper off to do the rear arch well i'm going to paint this thing all right <laughs> top will i'm going to paint it so what i want to do is essentially whip the front bumper off because it needs reattaching anyway and then just going over all of this stuff and working my way around the car to when I get to that arch and then we're going to weld it and fill it and do all that sort of cool stuff and then work my way around again and do all that sort of stuff as well because the plan is is to paint the car up to this line here so we're not going to do the roof we're not going to do the bonnet and the reason for that is because I don't want to so uh, everything else is going to be painted and then we're going to use a rattle can to touch up any other little bits and then this is going to be painted properly so it's going to look dead nice when it's done um, but for now i'm going to start working on getting this thing pulled apart and sanded away so uh how how is it how is it attached oh there's a couple of bolts there okay easy okay. did i just say easy whoops So that's how you remove the front bumper and as you can see there's a lot of this brown stuff so i just want to take this off and give it a good sand down and then we can primer over that so because this is relatively out of the way i'm going to go straight to using the milwaukee with a 240 grit pad on it why am i using a 240 well it's the only one i've got lower than a 500 which i need a bit more you know <laughs> um so uh yeah let's uh let's give it a go but health and safety first <sighs> oh hey. uh, oh i put them all open oh, this. Now you can really see where he's brush brushed this on which is fantastic isn't it but anyway that's that sort of semi semi prepped just going to pull the grill off again just so i can get into these bits there um just those screws at the top um and then i'll just start working my way around you know nice
so this sort of side here is taken to it really well you know we've got a nice key into the paint there this is what i think they call a, a blowover but yeah it's a, it's a blowover um so we've got to get the filler out and we've got to put a bit of filler on these once i've primed them with a bit of etch primer first will this last no will it look amazing no as well but it's going to look better than it did so you know all this brown and rust down here it's just going to look so nice when it's done but now i must tackle this oh right there yeah so this arch is made up of 30% body filler, 12% um, paint, and the rest of the percentage is very, very rusty metal. So I'm going to use this machine with one of these discs on it, and that's going to take a lot of this stuff off, and then we're going to weld some bits and fill some other bits, and uh, yeah, that'll look better than it does now. Okay, if you could all put your protective breathing gear on. That'd be great. Do you want to have a look? I said, do you want to have a look? I don't know who did all this before me, but I like him. I think we would have got on really well, you know? I could probably see myself having a pint with whoever, whoever did this. Um, and essentially, I'm just going to do exactly the same, and it'll last five to ten years, and then it'll need doing again, and so on and so forth. <laughs> um, but don't forget as well, you can't buy panels, so... Forget it, you know? Right, got the torch. Let's have a scan. So, this bit down here, this all this non-structural, I'm just going to sort of give that a bit of a, a an anti-rust and then fill it. Same with that bit there, same as what they've done there, and just sort of give this another skimmer filler, try and make it a nice shape. Down here, though, where the MOT man wants to see some action, I like what they've done here. Look at how they've curved this they've just sort of hammered it into shape I really like that fair play to I might put a skin of filler on that <laughs> make it look nice um so there's a hole here which I'm going to get my finger sander on which just does this at a thousand rpm and we'll uh do something with that make that nice and then here I'm thinking just curved panel round there and just do what they've done just just beat it over and a bit up there and yeah you know it's just going to be a bit of a hash job isn't it but it's got to be done this is my finger sander because it's like shaped like a finger and it makes this noise cool I just switched the compressor off so you can actually hear me but yeah that'll do look I'll just put a put a bit of weld on there set fire to a few things great um but yeah good progress I think this side's looking good so yeah join us tomorrow for day seven a full week
from yeah. the British Ambassador Project. See you then. Welcome to day seven. It's early doors and I've got here to start welding on this first thing so then we can finish off the bodywork while we're still waiting for parts to arrive. Um, do you want to have a look at how we're getting on? So just filled in all this stuff here, giving that a quick whiz back. Same with this thing up here, we just put a little bit in there. And now I need to make a thing for this bit and glue it on. And I've got to turn that into a wheel arch. It's very dangerous that there, isn't it? Should we do something about that? Uh, so uh, what do we do now? Uh, I know. How much do I need? Uh, some people make like, you know, templates and stuff, but I don't believe in any of that. Uh, that'll probably do there. Let's just chomp that off. Nice. Sure, we're going to win the concourse d'Italia with this, but who knows? Right then, there we go. Are you happy with that? I'm happy with that. Nice and solid uh, arch again. Once it's been filled and painted, you'd never know. Great, I'm gonna go and do the other side. And if you're worried about how good that welding was, I mean, look, you know, this is, this is the car that we're dealing with here. This is not a, a, a proper restoration like, so just chill your boots, you know what I'm saying? All right, so uh, Goldilocks and the three patches upon patches have been uh, sorted. Name me a British car that hasn't got patches on patches. Absolutely love it. It's the way it should be. Dead lucky. So last night I managed to find, I think, a set of these bushes, brand new, that are from an Allegro. So I hope they're the right size. Probably not going to be, but 
you know, just I hope they are because that is literally the only thing online that is available. So what am I going to do now? Well, I'm going to give all this a bit of a, a quick coat in black and then I'm going to start sanding the rest of the car down. So um, I'm just going to get on with that. Core blimey, governor. Status update. This side is a ball lake. Um, I knew it would be but every panel has been bush painted so to get these smooth is just hours and hours of sanding this bit here is all good this bit is the only bit left but you can see the layers of different stuff on there you've got the brown the the, the, this, uh, the blue you've got this blue you can see how it's split sorry battery died again then but yeah you've got this line along here where something's been masked and stuff and it's just, uh, you know, it's just how it is like. It's, it's a bit of a poor lake. And I put some filler, a few skims on everything. And we'll get round to those and get them all, you know, all these little dents and stuff. We'll just get rid of all of those. Just make the arches nice again. This arch over here again, just sort of build it up and, and yeah, all that good stuff. Um, so plenty to do. And there's also little things like as I'm going along, I'm noticing that the brushing was going up this C pillar here, or is it a D pillar? Because is that the C pillar? I don't know. Um, so yeah, a bit of work to do there as well. You know, it's just extra painting. Um, but it's you know, it's all good fun, isn't it? Yeah, let's crack on. We are ever steadily getting towards the sort of. Uh, maximum amount of time I can really spend on this bodywork. Now it's all, I know it looks a bit odd, but it's all really nice and smooth and just, you know, it's beautiful. And it's going to come up really well with a lick of paint. Really, really nice. This arch is as arch shaped as it's ever going to be. I mean, it's not going to win the sort of uh, top first, you know, prize in the show, but it's all right, it's good enough. But the main thing is, it's all there, you know. Oh, a bit more sanding to do there. So yeah, for a quick blow over, I mean, we are getting there very quickly, you know, it's, it's decent. It's, you know, sort of just over a day's work so far. You know, you could go further with this, but you know, you could be looking at another few hours just to try and make it as good as that side, but it is what it is. It's an old ambitious ambassador arch. So yeah, time to do sort of the inny bits inside here. Just get everything a nice key and make it look good. And then I can start cleaning up, getting ready for some primer. Welcome to day eight. Car is ready to go into primer. I've just got to clean it all down with some special syrup and then mask all the bits off that I don't want any paint going on, such as the windows 
and uh, the camera lens and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a good, enjoyable day, I hope. You know, this is quite a, I enjoy doing stuff like this because it's nice seeing the transformation at the end. And I'm, I'm waiting for my paint to be delivered and I hope it does turn up shortly as well because otherwise we're just going to be cruising around in primer. And I've got... <coughs> I've got one rattle can of Nautilus Blue, but I don't think that's going to do the, the job that I want it to do. <laughs> um, it's worth mentioning as well that the car is still running a bit rough. Now, I think I need to take the carb off, lay it all out and see what's been going on because there's, there's, a, there's a bit of stuff been happening. Um, I found this in all the stuff and I'm just... I think it's not fueling properly and I, I just want to see what's been put in there and I, I, I yeah it's just I, I need to do a bit of research on that you know and I wanted to put it back to these things now these are points because obviously in the first episode you saw that it had a electronic ignition kit bad news bad juju um so I wanted to replace all this and put a condenser in it put the points in it and get it all going all nice one of these little things here lovely um however the 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 electronic i'm trying not to name any names but we all know which company it is but the electronic ignition kit that's been fitted they've changed the backing plate because it's got 48d lucas distributor in it and it's quite an uncommon distributor it's very very rare in fact it's usually the 45d that's in in most things and that's what this AccuSpark, sorry that's what this electronic ignition kit was made for so when they put it on this they've changed the backing plate now i've looked through absolutely everything and there is no the, the original backing plate for the distributor isn't in there so i can't fit contacts back in it i can't fit points back in it which is a nightmare my only other option is there's a distributor on ebay for like 80 quid um so I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to just buy that and have, have done with it. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to get into that today um, because, yeah, I just want to... I'll spend a day on that, you know, when I've got some more time and just go through the carb um, and the distributor and make it run perfect. Off the key. Ding! First thing. But yeah, so let me show you what I've been doing here. So I've covered its warts and its welts with this magic sauce. Um, and then after I've painted the car, we're going to go around and we're going to touch up all these other bits on the car. Because there's three big panels I'm not painting. I'm not painting the boot because that's nice. Not painting the roof because that's okay and I don't want to paint the roof. Not painting the bonnet because that's okay and I don't want to paint the bonnet. And the reason for that is that that would cost a, a lot more in paint. It would cost a huge amount more in time and you know it leaves a bit of original paint on the car doesn't it you know it, you know it's no good saying oh it's had a complete respray like it's nice to have a bit of original paint on something you know and, it, and it'll polish up really well um so yeah that's where we're up to now that little rattle can that you saw then that's for doing stuff like inside the doors inside the door shuts that sort of thing i'll just give those a quick whiz over um, once it's all painted and yeah it's gonna look dead smart and i'll go around touch up all these bits and then give it a good clean up and polish and yeah next time you see it, it should have a bit of a should have had a bit of a transformation you know it looks cool like that doesn't it should we just like McGuire, look at the oil down there i think that's normal um yeah dead smart right let's get cracking this is panel wipe and this is blue roll you mix the two together and you rub it all over these bits and then they'll clean it and then you mask it all up and then you do this again fairly straightforward that bit isn't it
a better man than me would be removing stuff like this when he's painting the car but I'm not that guy and that's for two reasons one time is very precious and two in my experience the more you mess about with things the more likely they are to break and then you're not going to be able to put it back together properly so it's just you know and you might have to spend more money so just leave things be you know so i'm just gonna mash stuff off now and then we're gonna cover over it you know making a cup of tea because that was you know that was back breaking labor that was that was hard work man but she's looking good you know this is she's starting to come around to my way of thinking you know ye of little faith i thought you'd you know i bet you're sitting there at home watching this going oh, that's gonna look rubbish but trust me we're on our way with this thing we are on our way and don't forget i haven't revealed the secret special thing that i've been working on as well 
which is over there underneath the Henry Wash. But yeah, it's looking good. So I'm going to give it another rundown with panel wipe, clean everything off as best I can, do a bit more of a thorough cleaning job now. He's becoming but, a cup of tea. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned as well, but huge, huge thanks to a very, very good viewer who has sent me this like care package of like milks and coffees and all sorts of good stuff. Um, just for when I forget to buy milk, so at least I can have a brew. I mean, it's it's just the nicest thing in the world. Uh, so I thought while we're waiting for my tea to brew, I thought I'd introduce you to a couple of things. First of all, here's my magic box of delights. And there's all sorts of cool stuff up here. Um, which we're going to go through and I'll show you what's what and how we're going to make it all cool and all that kind of business. Um, but this is essentially all the different paints from different silver from the Amiga, off-white, that's for the wheels of the um, Mor Morris, that thing in the corner, if that ever gets done. Um, what else have we got? There's Kawasaki Green over there, that's something of Rob's. Uh, pewter from a silver Mercedes I was doing, red that's from the Visa, it's, it's cool, one day I'm going to paint something you know in like loads of different colours for a laugh. And then there's this thing on the wall, now it may look like a big radiator but this is something that Rob dreamt up when he was having one of his fever dreams um, and it's, it's pretty amazing. So what it is, is um, let me explain the process right. You've got two air compressors in here, air compressor number one and air compressor number two, which you may have seen before, which lives in there, lovely. Now, oh, right, that can stay there. Um, when you do air compression, you get moisture. So moisture builds up inside the air compressors and you drain it out every now and then and great. But what happens is, is the moisture goes through there, comes out of your gun, and is inside the paint and the um, all that sort of stuff. Now, that's bad juju, unless you're doing like a specifically water-based thing, but then it's not quite, it's just, anyway, it's bad juju. And if it's coming out of a lacquer gun, for example, with water in it, it's just, you're gonna get little bit bubbles and all sorts of stuff in the paint. So you have to dry your air. I hope I'm explaining this properly. You have to dry your air. Your air's got to be bone dry when it comes out of your gun. So this cool looking thing, right? So you've got, this is the bit here where the two pipes come in and then they go up this long pipe here, the two air compressor pipes, and then they go up and down and up and down and up and down. And then they come out to these things here. Now, hopefully, When I do that, as you can see, get behind this fucking engine hoist. You can see that a lot of water has been building up, a lot of moisture has been building up. And that's exactly what you want, because the moisture condenses in these pipes and it drips down and it sits at the bottom of this pipe here. And then all the air keeps doing that, gets drier and drier and drier, goes this final little machine here, which... which it, oh, drain out nicely there. And then it comes out of your gun. And when it comes out of your gun, the idea is, where is it? Here we go. The idea is that what you're getting out of there is bone dry. Exciting, yeah? And then you just get a better paint job which it's not really a big deal for this, but when you're doing something like that, it's a big deal. This paint job is like three, four days work. This paint job is so far where it's been about a year. So that's the difference in quality of jobs. And when you're doing something really quality, you need the best equipment and the best sort of air. You need the best air. Um, right, brew and mix paint.
So, this is what we've got. Let's start from the top. Tea, milk, no sugar. QP31002K Etch Primer. Now I like this stuff because it lays nice and smooth, but also it is one of the best things to use when you're gonna be hitting bare metal because it just seals it in a little bit nicer and can stop it, a lot of the corrosion coming back through. Anyway, that's what I've been told, whatever. Um, it seems to have worked so far though, you know. QH400, you mix that one to one, dead easy. A mixing cup, there's things there like one, two, one parts, one, two parts, you know, dead easy. A filter, which you then put in your gun here, and then you pour that into there, and then it goes in there, and then you connect that to an airline, and you go, and then you use this stuff to clean the gun afterwards. Now this gun here is my, well, I've got three guns, right? That vice is getting a bit sticky. This is my primer gun. Now, I always use the same stuff, so I don't need to be messing about with settings and things on this. It's just a cheap, cheerful gun. And I don't have to take great care of it because primer's a bit of a sort of quick, messy job, really. It's just, think of it like body filler sometimes. You just sort of like, sh you might do loads of coats in a day. So it's a pain in the ass to be going back and cleaning your gun all the time. So this is a cheap and cheerful, like 30 quid, and it's just nice and reliable. Sorry about the color in there, there's a bit of, green something left over <laughs> uh, but yeah it's nice cheap cheerful gun and it's just dead reliable always does what I want it to do and over there I've got two other guns one is uh, and they're both better more quality guns uh, one's for your um, metallic color and then the other is for your um, solid color or lacquer so solid color and lacquer are the same thing pretty much and metallic color is something completely different so there's a gun for each and we have to use like water-based paints and stuff um now which when i did my first bit of spraying years ago we didn't really use and now we have to and um yeah it's not much difference really you can sort of wipe water-based stuff off with a sponge if you need to so it's pretty cool i suppose uh, right then i'm going to start mixing up um and then we'll we'll get cracking Need to mix, you know, shake stuff as well, like so that'll be fun, won't it? In my experience as well, you don't really have to be super precise with any of this stuff, unless you're mixing colours. That's the only time when you, you've got to be super um, attentive about measurements and stuff like that is when you're trying to colour match something and mix a colour then it's got to be absolutely micron perfect micro perfect I don't know. um but yeah just for when you're chucking a bit of you know you could stick a bit of thinners in there if you want make it last a little bit longer make it go a bit further do whatever you want really but i think this is going to be enough and i think 500 mil half a litre is going to be enough um for us to do the things Cool. Then you need this majigger and you just stand there for an hour doing this. But yeah, this goes on really, really well, this stuff. It's really good. I've got another different primer in there that is a filler primer, which if I wanted to do a much, much nicer, much more thorough job, I would use that um, because you'd then go over it afterwards and, you know, sort of block it down and give it a real good um, finish. Wet and dry it and stuff maybe, which is why I, I did with a mini, but, you know, just to give you an example like that, that, that mini did take just so long to paint. <laughs> uh, which is why I don't really think I want to be doing something like that again, really, because it's, I get bored quite easily. I need something, you know, I need like a, a, a new thing to focus on quite, you know, all the time. So, 
don't know if you're like me, you just want to, you know, get something in, get it done and get it gone. But right. after this ambassador, I think we're gonna we're gonna get the mini finished, you know, because it's taking up space. Okay, that's probably done. So let's get rid of all the thinners out of here. Hopefully that will be yeah, lovely. I'm gonna let that chill in there now and I'm gonna give the car another panel wipe and then I'm gonna use this nasty beastie inside of here which is a tack cloth and then we'll start Okay, we're on. I'm gonna do the less conspicuous bits first, just in case there's any reactions or anything. I can not have to worry about those so much. Just checking we're not getting loads of overspray on there. And if you're wondering why I'm not wearing a mask, well there's big, it's wind coming in, big open door. And I've told you before, I've got lungs of steel. Cool. Gonna refill this and then do it again and I'll show you what it looks like, okay? Well, it's uh, it's not brown anymore, you know? It's some creamy yellowy colour. Looks like a blancmange, doesn't it? Well, I'm not sure what a blancmange is. It was a band in the 80s, wasn't it? But yeah, looking smart. I'm gonna clean my gun and all that stuff over there give it i don't know 20 minutes half an hour see if it's dry and then i might attack it with a little bit of 600 in some places just to flatten it down if it needs it and then we'll hopefully have received the paint by then as well because it's on its way allegedly so it's been about 45 minutes or so and you know this is why i absolutely adore this primer it is just, I don't know if you can tell, but like how flat this thing's laid. You could paint, you could genuinely paint straight on that now and it'd look absolutely superb. Really, really nice finish. Totally buzzed with that. Just looks fantastic all the way over. You know, that arch is really starting to look okay. When there's a bit of a darker color on it, it's gonna take your eye off it a bit more. The fact that it's shaped like, a prawn cracker but what i want to do now is i'm just going to run over it dead quick with some 600 or 800 i think actually a bit of 800 on it and i'm just going to take off any little bits of fallout because obviously you know we're we're spraying inside a large dust chamber 
so I just want to sort of get any little bits off. Not ideal. I've just been on the phone to the paint people who supply the paint and I've been like, well, where is it? And they've gone, well, it's on his van. And I was like, okay, where's his van? And they were like, oh, he's on his way. And I was like, well, come on, give us an idea. And he said, well, you're quite far away, so you're going to be looking about five o'clock. It's now two. So I'm just stuck in limbo here, waiting for paint for this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my mask in here. And I'm going to lift the bonnet up and I'm going to get this carb off and I'm going to take it over to the bench and just start having a clean up of that because I might as well do something while I'm waiting, you know. <sighs> this is one of the difficulties of um, being stuck out in the sticks is that you're always the last one to get anything. Oh well, right, let's go. Hello, Calvaretta's time. So I've pulled this thing off and what, what do all these bits do? Um, thankfully, I think I've got all the gaskets, rebuildy bits, everything that I need in that box over there. So I'm just going to start pulling it apart and seeing what's involved inside, seeing what the jets look like, seeing if anything's blocked or whatever, and then we'll... Uh, yeah chuck it all back together there's a bit of gunk in there so it's not i mean it's not bad you know in terms of gunk but there is every opportunity that it is blocked in some capacity so yeah let's get stuck into it i've taken this bottom bit off look which i think is where all the petrol sits and then this thing moves around and stuff it's all dead complicated but yes yes that is bits mmm delicious bits Mmm, there's not supposed to be any bits, that's the thing. So, uh, yeah, I think the carb's going to be all clogged and stuff, so I'm just going to clean it as best as I can, and then, uh, yeah, hopefully that'll make it go. Good God, what is all these small parts? Terrifying. Uh, so anyway, just uh, exploded this, and... There's a few interesting little bits, such as the uh, sort of O-ringy sealer type thing here. Very badly perished and not cool. And that is for the choke assembly or the, the sort of cold start thing. So, and it's also, there's, there's just crap in it everywhere. It's just not, it's just bad, bad juju. And that, you know, we were having problems with that. So I'm hoping that that might be the, the issue um and inside there yeah that's where it all sits just not the best so i'm just going to try and clean it all out and then reassemble it with some new bits thankfully thank this is just amazing there is um i found this which doesn't get much better than that does it um so it's really helping me go through everything and and just sort of not panic as much um you know with all the little bits so i've just got to you know put it all back together now using new things and clean it all up and hopefully it'll go we'll see good news is the paints arrived bad news is that was that was expensive man wow 160 quid anyway this is all back together will it work i doubt it um and i've just been filling this little thing up with a bit of oil and let's see what the piston's doing when i move it up and down where's it gone there it is so oh yeah it's nice and stiff now it should take about five seconds for it to fall so one two three four five yeah kind of i didn't go all the way to the top then but that was close enough there wasn't it right then um just gonna have a little read through this see if i'm missing anything and then we'll chuck it back on the car we're steadily getting very close to the end of day eight and i thought uh i would get the paint down before the end of the day and then i can leave it for a couple of days while my other occupation's calling and uh 
then uh, when I come back I can unwrap it like a great big blue blancmange Christmas present so I'm excited for that can you tell so this is my lacquer or solid paint gun and I've just remembered that last time I used it and cleaned it it developed a leak with this seal here and I forgot to fix it so I'll just cover my hands in some stuff and um, might get a bit blue let's check my notes on this um, I've not used this turbo plus thing before see if it's any good Now this has been in the back of a van all day traveling around the northwest so probably doesn't need much in terms of shaking up or he's shaken up enough already it's a traumatic journey that it's been on uh so what are we on so we'll go for two to one so why don't we go two four and then a 500 and a splash of thinners up to 550 or is that going to be too much in the gun so let's do 150 300 450 uh yes a 300. i like to leave some of the paint dripping down the side of the can and then i can easily identify which color it is when it's in the cupboard clever that isn't it so 300 half of that 450 uh splash of thinners he says as well that's usually 50 mil, industry standard size of a splash. So there we go, just get that down a bit. I feel like maybe we should, whoops, far too much. I don't know, knocked it over. Right, let's give this thing a good old mixolation. Now this stuff's a bit more harmful than the primer. I think so I'll, I'm gonna wear my mask for this I don't want to paint the inside of my lungs blue drink blue's a nice color isn't it I like blue let's do more blue cars it's definitely gonna overflow cool well right, I'm gonna leave that to do its thing and I'm gonna give the car another Panel wipe. I promised I'd wear it, just in case my mum watches. Ben, why aren't you wearing this?
Right, I'm going to mix up a little bit more and give it another coat and I'll show you around afterwards. Like any good British day out, we have ended up with the runs, um, which is completely understandable because it's about five degrees and I'm trying to paint the car. Uh, but that's okay, I can get those out, that's not a problem. A little bit of a wet sand and a buff, and I'm going to be buffing the bonnet and the roof and stuff anyway so it's only going to take me another half an hour to do those runs so that's fine but the bits that aren't all runny look i mean that is a nice paint job yeah. a couple of bits of fall out in there but they'll dissolve naturally i mean look at that absolutely beautiful real nice bit of kit oh is that one? Oh god yeah look at that one bloody hell Yeah, really nice, lovely stuff. So I'm hoping that's going to dry perfectly flat and smooth so I don't have to cut and polish the whole thing. Just get rid of a few runs. But yeah, dead good. Can someone buy me a paint booth? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? If you're a multi-millionaire and you're listening or you're watching the video and you're like, this is entertaining, dip your hand in your pocket, buy me a paint booth. Come on. But yeah, that's dead smart. Like it, I like it, I like it. Yeah, a little bit there. Very cool. Right then, I've got a bit of tidying up to do and then that's it for day eight. I'm going to leave this beautiful blue thing for a couple of days and I'm going to come back when it's all hardened to the max and uh, get the rest of the stuff off and give it a good sort of uh, polish and clean and everything really and, you know, wait for these parts to arrive. Exciting. That's come up really nice. What a nice colour that is. You know, when it comes down to it, that's a really nice colour. Now, I've laid it on so thick that I've got some runs in it. So I've come down this evening to tidy these runs up. But it's on so thick that whoever wants to take this thing on after me, you could sort of sit there and, and, and you know, get it all polishy with it. You could make this thing look like new, you know, without much work. Look at that, it's just beautiful. All the hard work's been done. So now it's smooth sailing. <laughs> um, the car gods have smiled upon us. Look at these. These are the rear beam mounts. I hope they fit, I think they do, these are off an Allegro, but they came to me from Evil Bay. Look at these exhaust mounts. Brand spanking, where's the other one? Where's the other one? Uh, it's, probably, it's probably falling out in the car, don't worry. Track rod end. Wow, what's in here? Nice set of uh, lovely jubbly leads, proper ones, not bloody Fisher Price ones that were in there. A new rotor arm that I'm probably not going to need. An incredible new technology just been developed. <laughs> Sticky mirror. You just cut it to shape and stick it over the mirror. Get it through an MOT guys, come on. I actually saw two brand new mirrors, not brand new, so excellent condition, good second hand mirrors on eBay, but they want 150 quid for them. So I'll leave that for the, for the next owner. And I also, I found this today in some work I was doing. 
This is an old ATS alloy wheels catalogue. I'm just showing you this. It doesn't bear any relation to what we're doing, but how cool is that? Old ATS cups and stuff are just amazing. Really smart. So I'm going to put that on the wall. That's the first thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to put this on the wall. But anyway, I've got plenty of stuff to be catching on with. Um, yeah, you don't need to see all this because I want it to be a surprise. Now, I'm going to get to work peeling this thing off and buffing and polishing and rubbing down my little run marks and that. It's now day 11. Why do things always come down to the wire? You know, how annoying. Um, I have to get this car done today because the MOT retest runs out today and I need the next couple of days to get this video prepared so it goes out to you guys on Friday night so we can all have a pizza and watch it. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Right, I've been waiting in the house all morning for these to arrive. We've got a set of brake hoses. Fabulous. And a distributor, a new old stock distributor allegedly, even though it does look like it's very, very, very used. Um, but yeah, so the idea today, or for the next few hours at least, is to get these brake hoses fitted on this side, get this distributor fitted, try and get it running perfectly, and then take it for a retest. Everything else is done on the car, all the other little jobs, which I'll show you now. Right then, we've got exhaust clamp fitted. Uh, only one. I'm still trying to find the other one. <laughs> Hope he passes that. Um, steering rack gaiters. They're all in and nice and cool. Sorry about the lighting. I don't know if you can actually see what I'm talking about here. Um, welding's all done. I've had the brakes apart at the back. Um, they've all been sorted. Uh, yeah, all the, you know, that's looking a lot better than it was. Um, Still working away on the bodywork, just getting a bit of uh, cutting and buffing done, ready for it to look all spanking new. Yeah, patches upon patches, great. We're ready to go. I've just fitted these delicious new things. And that was a very nice little job, you know. It's probably the quickest I've ever changed a couple of brake hoses in my life. And these are just bleeding themselves. Incredible brakes. I know it's very heavy car, but really, really big, chunky brake calipers. These, you know, it's like, is it four pot? I mean, for a car that's got, you know, barely a hundred horsepower, that is optimistic. Oh man. Whew. I hate working in mess. Now there's just mess everywhere. I need to spend a bit of time tidying this place up. Um, listen, just listen to this. She's running on four. That's only just timed up by her again. New distributor in. New wire into the coil. We might be in with a shout here. I need to take it for a retest. Just thank God, you know, because if that wasn't the problem, I had a feeling that would be the problem. The AccuSpark stuff is just like, all my dealings with it of all the classic cars that have had it my other classic cars don't that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't they all have proper points the only times i've dealt with AccuSpark has been problems now i'm sorry if you're an AccuSpark fan or if you are mr AccuSpark, but that's just how it is like you know i apologize that runs perfectly nice thing so, before I do anything else, I'm going to tighten everything back up here, give it a clean, and I'm going to change the oil on it, because the oil hasn't been changed yet, and I think it probably needs it. So I'll get the oil and filter changed, 
um, and then we'll take it for a retest. Getting lots of nice looks off people in this car, because I, and I think it's potentially not because the car's nice to look at, but because of its rarity. You know, and it's all the older boys, they're looking at it and going, fuck hell, I haven't seen one of those for donkey's years. So, what do we know about the drive? Well, it drives perfectly. I mean, it's, the gear change is a little bit sloppy, but they are on these. That's what I've heard when I've been watching these videos, you know, other people's ambassador videos. Um, but they're all there, all the four gears are there. It does crunch a tiny little bit getting into the third, but whatever. The, the, the comfort of this ride is like unparalleled, yeah? It's, it's just a, a real sort of... Well, it's like no other car you've ever driven. It, it just feels very, it feels solid, really rock solid on the road. Not the sort of thing that you'd want to go rallying around a racetrack, but for getting to a to B. It, could this be one of the most comfortable cars I've ever sat in? I mean, it's up there. Really, really comfortable. Really nice. It's driving straight. It's driving well. Steering wheel's a little bit off, but you know, it does. It doesn't pull. Doesn't sort of lurch. The brakes are excellent. Everything works. The heater works. The windows work, albeit a little bit slow. It's just a, a, a quality car. I'm really really pleased oh there's a little bit of a crunch for you really pleased that i've got this thing back on the road because it just deserved it man it really really deserved it the new owner of this car what you're gonna to have to do on the inside well you need to do a headline in or don't bother it's up to you um you have to put a stereo in it uh what else the economy gauge doesn't particularly work um, and i think the little vacuum cable for it's just dangling around in the engine bay so that'll be something for you to work on um oh dodge ram went past uh what else Oh, it needs those little knobs for the for the heater switches down there, you know, the ones that push on. Probably just get some generic ones for those. Everything's very clean and tidy in here. It's nice. Not a lot to do, you know. Not a lot to do at all. So I'm just happily sort of cruising along at 60 mile an hour here, and it, it's just... It's just lapping it up. There's no wheel wobble, there's no suspension knock, there's, there's just nothing. It's just gliding over the bumps. Bit of wind noise, but now I've got the sunroof open. And it's shaped like a semi-detached house. But yeah, dead cool. This has been a hell of a, hell of a trip. The Austin Ambassador had a real weird start in life you know the princess if you you know go and look at a picture of princess or if i'm a good editor i'll put one up now and then it, it, it turned into this but it only turned into this for a year and a half and the development that they must have done to go from that to this must have been absolutely huge to just sell it for a year and a half and they didn't sell many and i think they didn't really sell many because it was fairly sort of basic inside when you compare it to what else was available and only having like a four speed box and a few other bits like that you, you know you, you you could have done better i think as, as a as a manufacturer back then and I, I just don't know why they did i think they were trying to just have that car to sell for that extra year and a half while they bought the montego out you know um which was the sort of next thing on the line and the maestro and stuff which in terms of sort of equipment level and gears and that sort of thing were a lot more equipped than this so it was a, it's just a strange thing why did they just not make it but i'm kind of glad they did because it's really really rare and really unique 
And this is the sort of thing, if you took this to a Cars and Coffee, which I'm gonna do 100%, I'll be taking it to a couple of those before it sells. But if you, you know, you, you could turn up to a car show in this and you could be surrounded by McLarens and Ferraris and everybody's gonna be looking at this and they'll be looking at this because they've never seen one before. You know, they'll be like, what is that wedge? It's an Austin Ambassador. Fantastic, really, really good. Oh, do you hear that gear, gear crunch? There's a couple of little niggles, you know, in terms of like, uh, what could be better in this car. There's no rev counter. So, that's a bit sort of, well, annoying really, because it should have a rev counter. When I'm in third gear and I'm just sort of cruising along at 30, 35 mile an hour, I, you know, and I go to fourth and then it's a little bit, fourth's a little bit too high and then back down to third and, you know, you sort of, that fifth gear would have been nice. One of the questions I always ask myself when I've done a car like this is, if I saw it again today, knowing what I now know, would I have done it again? And the answer to that is yes, I would have done it again. And the, the reason being is that everything went together really, really well on this car. Um, all the nuts and bolts, and even just when I was bleeding the brakes earlier today after I fitted a new rear wheel, uh, wheel cylinder to the back, um, and those two hoses to the front, all the bleed nipples, all six of the bleed nipples, cracked off perfectly well. There was no issues at all there. And, you know, when I changed the rear wheel cylinder, it took like a few minutes. And this is a car that's been sat dormant for 20 odd years. And I was just able to undo the bolts like it was a, a brand new car. And a lot of the ways things are connected and how they sort of work and, uh, you know, the engineering behind it was really good, really sound. So I'm just like, you know, I wish Austin would have kept making cars, you know. And I don't mean like MG, like those crappy Chinese things now. I mean like a proper British, uh, you know, equivalent to this. Right. Oh, just pulling up. So it's day 14. Wow, what a couple of weeks it's been. I am cream crackered. I've been so busy doing it and I, it's been a, a, a real race to the finish you know I, I've I because I, I have to get back to my other occupation like tomorrow so this was the last possible day I had on it and thankfully it's done and thank you very much to Allard as well for coming and helping me today just to do a little bit of filming um, and to finish off sort of polishing her up um, and I'm going to show you some of those shots while I'm talking to you now um, but yeah She's not perfect. She still needs stuff like the bonnet um, sort of buffing up or maybe repainting as the same for the roof. Um, what else does she need? The headlining, of course, needs redoing. I've still got the board for that in there, which I can give to the next owner. Needs a stereo putting in it, of course, which we all know is very, very important on cars. Um, you could probably do with getting a, the actual fuel pump for the car, that would help, definitely. Oh, and a couple of mirrors, of course. But aside from that, it doesn't really need anything. It's a very, very easy project for someone. I have done all of the hard work. Everything has been boxed off on this car that it needs to become a functioning member of society. You can take this down to some car shows and all sorts of stuff now and you're going to get all the looks, you know. So off camera I've done some other work to the car, under sealed all underneath the bits that, you know, would need it, all in these sort of jacking points and all that sort of stuff. So that's going to be pretty easy to maintain now for the next sort of few years and or, or, or a lot longer than that. It's not going to really need anything doing to it, providing you keep using it. Using classic cars is the key, isn't it? You know, because then you warm them up and cool them down and all that sort of stuff and they don't sit and rust. Um, everything else on the car is super, brakes, clutch, gearbox, engine, all perfect now, running exactly as it should. It sounds brilliant. It's been hard work to get it to that stage though, you know. 
fresh plugs, leads, the distributor's all brand new, it's had all of the bits that it needs um, and it starts first time on the button. Do you want to see? What a powerful car! So that's it. That's the end of the episode. And I hope you enjoyed it, you know. Oh, here comes Dickie. So that's it. Now look, thanks very much for watching. I know that must have been arduous getting through all that. You know, it was bad enough filming it, let alone having to watch it. Christ, I feel sorry for you. Um, but yeah. Thanks for watching though, I really do appreciate it and I hope you didn't skip any adverts, you know, I need the fucking money after all this expense. It's been <laughs> quite expensive, um, but yeah, it's done. If you want to buy the car, it's going to go onto eBay or something soon, I don't know when, I might enjoy it for a little bit first, who knows, um, or get in contact with me if you want to buy it, I need a few grand back for it, so there you go. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next Tasty Classics upload, whatever that may be. Goodbye! Oh, actually, there was just one more thing before you go. Ambassador. <laughs>